And another thing. Have you met the local lord? Sir Hanush? Of course. He's a jovial sort and doesn't know what fear is. And Sir Hans Capon? Have you seen him? Aye, I saw him. And for a young fellow, he was as drunk as... Well, as a lord. Which he is, of course. All of this here belongs to him, so he can do as he damn well pleases. I reckon I'd do the same in his shoes. Thanks. Take care now. I'm glad you're here. What's happening, sir? Uncle Sahanush sent for me. No doubt he wants to give me another ear bashing about the error of my ways. And he said to bring you too. What has it got to do with me? Plenty. You're in it with me ever since that punt. All right. We should get going then, shouldn't we, Sir Hans? The sooner we get it over and done with, the better. I suppose so. Right away. I put some of my old clothes in a trunk for you. I don't want you making me look bad in front of Hanush. So go and get dressed up before we head off. Thanks, Sir Hans. I'll go and get changed now. Good day, Henry. So, should we go then? Let's go. And by the way, I'm glad you got dressed up properly. Clothes make the man, and in your case, it's quite a transformation. Come along then. Ward and his, what shall we say, chaperone? Uncle. My lord. I hope we haven't dragged you away from anything too important. Not at all, Uncle. We like were just... boozing and whoring, for instance? Uh, Uncle, I can... Perhaps you were busy causing mayhem in the middle of the night and beating up my subject. <sighs> no, it wasn't. Henry and I were just... Henry's as big a fool as you are. But he's not my ward, thank Christ. What the hell do the pair of you think you're doing? There are people in this fiefdom who work from dawn to dusk to put food on their tables and on yours, may I remind you. And then they look at you, Hans, their lord and master, and see a drunken layabout. That fellow you beat up last night was a guard, a new guard on the town watch. And he couldn't report for duty this morning because of his injuries. I had the bailiff here complaining, and could I tell him what I really think about this whole sorry affair? Of course not. That would demean me. And you too. So I had to sit gaping like a stuffed owl and listen to his grievances. Maybe you think because you're the Lord here you can get away with anything. But you're sadly mistaken, you blockhead. A lord remains a lord only as long as he commands the loyalty of his subjects. 
I'm sure I don't have to tell you the folk here are not exactly enchanted at the prospect of having you in charge. That was the last straw, Capon. One more of your escapades and I'll send you to your mother in Polna. For all I care, she can dress you up like a wench and marry you off to some Hungarian. Uncle, that arson b Archibald tried to murder me. What was I to do? Oh, don't exaggerate. Well, I'm hardly surprised after you molested his girl and humiliated him. Well, I was only... Oh, I'm don't so whine, for I'm heaven's sorry. sake. It's about time you started taking some responsibility. I have a job for you. Maybe that will keep you out of mischief. Sir Milota of Oleshna has turned up here. Do you know him? Isn't he Sir Bernard's cousin? He is. He came here with the remnants of his retinue to seek refuge. He's seriously wounded. What happened to him, sir? His fortress Oleshna was attacked by one Wolfren of Camburg. Milota pursued him almost as far as Neuhof and engaged with him. Unfortunately, the skirmish didn't end well for Milota. Wolflin of Camber, that name is familiar. Yeah, he's kin to the Oleshna lords too, a cousin of Bernard's and Melotta's. And their family affairs are a little complicated. None of my business, of course. I just wish they'd found somewhere else to thrash out their differences. What do you want us to do, sir? Go and see Bernard in the courtyard. He got a report that Wolflin pillaged some other farms around Neuhof, and he's putting a squad together to ride against him. Mind your step, though. It's a family affair, after all. Maybe more to it than meets the eye. The important thing is to get that damn scavenger out of the domain. If possible, without bloodshed. I can't afford to lose any men over this business. Have I made myself clear? Yes, sir. Very well, Uncle. Get to work, then. Oh. Huh? He didn't fall out of the sky. Everyone's got a king. I bet that he's from a man. They've got a fortress in it. They've got plenty, all right. Sir Bernard's father has charge of some estates near Coley. I don't like it. Stop your grumbling. You get paid, don't you? You can't take it with you, though, can you? Everyone has to die sometime. Soldiering is as good a job as Sir Hannes sent me, Captain. I'm to join your mission. And Sir Hans, too. Then mount up, youngster, and we'll move out. I have some, uh, trophies. Let's see. Uh, good. That's how to treat the bastards. Ah! 
Something like that. Yeah. We have the same great grandfather, Urban Baron of Alesha. Yeah. Wilson belongs to a distant branch of my family. Yeah. Which, well, let's just say they bring no honor to our name. But I heard Wolfen in Camper yeah. was hanged somewhere in Silesia after plundering the bishop's estate. Yeah. I heard the say. Only, well, I'm sure you've heard what they say about yeah. the Hamburg branch. My family. That they're cursed. <laughs> yeah. No, but not. Don't you think I'm a little old for fairy tales? What you like? I heard it from my grandfather. Yeah. He never paid attention to old wives' tales. Yeah. I meant no offense. Yeah. Help. Tell me all about it. Help. After all, there's no smoke without. Yeah. Fire. And I never heard about the temple of the family. Member of the family. Yeah. Very well. At home, we always spoke in whispers about our Hamburg yeah. relatives. Wolf and Sparta, Wilhelm came to visit. I'm almost yeah. ashamed to say it. You can rely on my discretion, yeah. Captain. Carry on. Well, the servants yeah. were so afraid of him that they went and hid in the barn. Father had them whipped. Yeah. Even then, they wouldn't go near Wilhelm. They were afraid. He cursed them. I couldn't blame them. Yeah. Why is that? Wilhelm's yeah. face was so badly <laughs> disfigured, folk yeah. had lost themselves when they saw him. I was afraid of him as a boy. Was he wounded in war? Yeah. Born. He and his mother, now that Barbara of Hogwitz, didn't want to marry yeah. Wilhelm's father, my grandfather's brother. He never wanted to bear his children. So, yeah. she fell pregnant. They said she was a witch to get rid of the child. Ended up having twin couples. They grew up yeah. Five babes born in one night. Jesus Christ. That's not all. Four of them didn't live. Yeah. The Only the fifth survived. He was this thick. Will that which she yeah. did her. Instead of getting rid of the child, put the devil's seed inside her. Good lord. How dreadful. Well, yeah. Wilhelm carried that with him his whole life. His own wife was a child. Yeah. He had seven fires niggling in the chamber day and night. He didn't stop the rumors. When his son, Wolfgang, was yeah. born, he looked normal enough. He turned out to be yeah. as wild as a straight pup. They see he hasn't grown up. Right about Yeah. It. Years ago, Wolfen went off. Holy. Wilhelm got worse and worse. Cursed yeah. everything. Everyone in his past started throwing crockery at the servants. He's on his death. Yeah. He sent for a priest, not just to give him the last rites, but because he was afraid the devil would come out of him and possess yeah. someone else. Then later, Wolfen turned up, even though he was supposed to be dead for years. Yeah. Both said he was dead. That wouldn't stop him. Yeah. It sounds a lot more convincing yeah. than you than the story Whoa. from the Go down. How are we supposed to deal with them on the like that? Cyril. I sent them to scout ahead. Those bastards will pay for this. They most certainly will. Let's go. We have to make camp. Hamlin, we'll take two men and come back here later. I won't have Vitus and Cyril left as crow me. Yes, Captain. Got it. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Henry. God be with you. Tell me, Captain, how come this Wolfram is attacking his own kin? They say blood's thicker than water, but sometimes I wonder. Look at our king and Sigismund. So what's the cause of your conflict with Wolfram? Nothing in particular. Just that he's a ruffian, a treacherous bastard, and a bandit. No wonder the whole Camber clan is cursed. How do you mean cursed? Like I said, Wolfram's grandfather married Countess Barbara of Hogwitz. She didn't want to bear his child and went to a witch to get rid of it. Only instead of getting rid of the unborn child, she ended up having five. What, all at the same time? All in one night. But only one of them lived till morning. The youngest, Wilhelm. And his face was disfigured. They say the witch deceived the Countess, and it was Satan himself who impregnated her. How are you related? Naloda, Wolfen, and I have the same great-grandfather, Urban, Baron of Oleshna. And you believe that story? Depends how you look at it. Wilhelm wasn't a bad man while he was in his right mind, but he was terrifying to look at. I still get shivers down my spine when I think of him. As for Wolfen, word came that he died in Silesia. Then, one day, he appeared from nowhere. There are folk who say death has no power over him. What do we do now? First, we have to find out where those horses are holed up. According to the reports, they raided a few farms around here. So someone should go to those places and find out what they can. You should do it, Henry. My men would probably just startle them. Well, isn't it dangerous? About as dangerous as sitting here in the camp. Yeah, I suppose you're right, sir. Where are the farms they raided? One is uphill from Neuhoff, right by the woods. One here above the woods by the crossroads, directly north from our camp. Good luck, then. God bless you. What troubles you? Goodbye.
God watch over you, good knight, especially in these dark times. Can I do something for you? Captain Bernard sent me. It's about that attack. Well, they came, took everything they could, and rode off again. I don't know what else I can tell you. We're trying to catch up with that gang, so I need to hear every detail you can tell me. What do you want to know? How many of them were there? Two or three. I'm not sure. My head's still in a spin. Which way did they go? I don't know. I wasn't watching. My husband made me hide indoors, and I only saw them through the window. So your husband was outside? Yes. He tried to parley with them. What did they take? Not much. We haven't a pot to piss in, which I told them in no uncertain terms as soon as they came here. So you're telling me they came here, you told them there was nothing worth taking, and they just rode off again, without further ado? More or less. But just a while ago, you told me you were indoors the whole time. Ah, uh, yes, I was. Mostly. So, were you inside or outside? Did you talk to them or not? Well, like I say, it was confusing. I don't remember much. Look here, I'm not sure what happened here, but I can't shake the feeling you're holding something back. No! It's just... it all happened so quickly. I'm still bewildered from it all. I'm the one who's bewildered. Let me make one thing clear. Those bandits are led by Sir Wolfling, Baron of Camberg, and he's not just some common outlaw. If we don't catch him, there'll be hell to pay. So you better speak up, no matter what happened here. Lord Jesus, why must we be persecuted so? So, what really happened here? First, promise me you'll get rid of them. That's exactly what I'm here for. They came a few days ago, took a pig and a sack of apples, we put up no resistance. I noticed one of them had an injured leg, so I offered to treat it for him. Why would you help those cutthroats? They didn't behave violently towards us, and I thought it would be best to keep them happy. At least they left me some apples. Go on. What happened then? They rode off, and I prayed we'd seen the last of them, only the same evening. They came back again. One of them had been wounded, and they wanted me to take a look at him. They gave me some coin and took me to their camp. And in the morning I came home again. I understand. They threatened you. They didn't exactly threaten me. They didn't have to. But if they get away from you, they'll come back and get revenge. Don't worry. We'll take care of them. So you know where they're camped? I'd like you to leave me there. I won't go to their camp, no. But I know of a place where you'll have a good view of it. That'll do me. God bless. I'm not going any further. If they saw me, I'd be done for. The camp's not far away in this direction. Thanks. And don't worry. I'll deal with those bastards. I pray you do. Looks like I found it. I'd better get back and report to Captain Bernard.
Yeah. Good health to you. I found that encampment. Ah, I'm glad to hear it. Is it far? Not really. How many men did you see? About 15. Shit. That won't be easy. Oh well, nothing to be done. Wolfen of Camberg must hang from the ramparts in Ratai. Wouldn't it be better to parley with them, sir? Parley with robbers? You must be out of your mind, lad. Sir Hannes ordered me to avoid unnecessary casualties. What are you trying to say? I could go and parley with Wolfie. Even if it comes to nothing, I could have a good look at his encampment. Hmm. Bit of spying could well be of use, all right. Wolfie's a conceited bastard. If he knows you come from me, he'll receive you just for a chance to tell me to go to hell. I'll give you a livery with my coat of arms, so it's clear you're my messenger. And you'll have to go unarmed. Thank you, Captain. I'll do my best. I hope so. I'll try and come back in one piece. I don't want to explain to Sir Radzig why I sent his favorite into a robber baron's camp unarmed. See you later. Oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah.
I'm glad you came. God bless you. What troubles you? I convinced Captain Bernard to let me go and parley. Are you mad, Henry? They'll send your head back in a bag. They won't kill me. They'll know I'm Bernard's envoy. He gave me livery with the Aleshna coat of arms. I don't think a gang of bandits will pay too much attention to livery. But if you want to be a hero, go right ahead. Good luck, then. Look what I've got for you. You'll love this. Greetings. Good luck then. Fly for Christ's sake, there's people walking here! Hey you, what do you want? I'm Captain Bernard's envoy. I'm here to parley. Why should I trust you? I'm unarmed. What harm can I do? Hmm, that's true. And you're wearing Sir Bernard's colors. I suppose I should take you to Sir Wolflin. If you try any tricks, you'll regret it. Understood? You have my word.
stink everywhere. Should have stayed home. have here? What's your name, boy? Henry. I'm a messenger from... I know. From my beloved cousin, Sir Bernard of Aleshna. So, what exactly Fucking is your player. message? Fucking tent. Fucking camp. I do you know for this shit? I heard some interesting tales about you. They say your family is cursed. <laughs> So Bernard's been telling those stories again. How my Leshy cousins do love to gossip. So your father didn't have... What? A twisted mouth. Aye. Looked like it was run over by a wagon. And he was born with four siblings and none of them lived. True. But they always leave one thing out of that theory. What's that? That my grandmother was one of five babes and her mother one of four. That's how it goes in that family. And then that talk of the witch. Pah. My grandma couldn't wait to marry my grandfather and give him children. Why do you want to hurt the lords of Aleshna? That bastard Malata stole villages that belonged to my father. I was in Poland when my father died, and Malata convinced everyone I was dead too. But you came back though, didn't you? Hi. I came back. But Malata bribed the priest to testify that my father made him a deathbed confession. That bastard swore my father told him he was possessed, and so was his son. Me. So they think I rose from the dead and I'm a warlock. They won't hear my claim. That doesn't give you the right to go around plundering Sahanish's estates. Yeah. All in all, I'm as much of a bastard as Malata is, but that doesn't mean I'll leave him in peace. We offer you safe conduct out of this domain if you leave everything you stole from Sahanish's subjects and pay three score groschen in compensation. That's a very generous offer. But tell me, why should I accept? Don't you know what's been going on around here recently? Should I? Bandits have been on the rampage all over the county. Cutthroats raided a nearby stud farm, and the locals have had enough of it. No doubt, but I have nothing to do with it. Try telling them that. On the way here, the captain recruited men from half the county. He intends to make an example of you. Why me? No doubt you've plenty to choose from. Because you're the first one who's had the gall not to run. So you'll be the first one they catch, and I'm sure you can imagine what will happen then. And why warn me? Why parlay at all if there are so many of you? So Hannes wants to avoid unnecessary bloodshed. He'd be happier if you just moved on somewhere else, so he sent me to bargain with you. You're saying it wasn't Bernard's idea? If the captain knew I came here in his colours, he'd flay me alive. The devil take it. There's nothing here worth pillaging anyway. All right. Accept your offer. Tell your captain we'll move on. Don't forget to leave the loot and 60 groschen, too. There's no denying you're a good negotiator, lad. Oh well. No doubt we'll find easier pickings elsewhere. Better run along before Bernard loses patience.
I've just come back from Wolfling, Captain. And in one piece, I see. That's something, at least, but I doubt you achieved anything. I talked them into moving out. Not only that, but they left all their loot and three score of Groshen, too, as compensation. I can hardly believe it. That turned out a lot better than I expected. The coin is for Sir Hanush, I expect. Naturally. Well, then, take the money and ride to Ratai. In the meantime, we'll break camp and make sure those bastards keep their part of the bargain. Right, Captain. I'll be on my way. And Henry? Nice work. Take care. God bless you. What troubles you? I went to parley with Wolflin. So how did that go? I convinced him to take his gang and leave. Really? I knew you were no fool, but that's something else. You're a born diplomat, Henry. Oh, I don't know about that. Don't be so modest. We have to drink to this. Good luck, then. Oh. Yeah. Yeah.
Greetings. What business have you? I have news from the camp, Sir Hannes. Speak. I persuaded Captain Bernard to let me parley with Wolflin. Bernard agreed. I'm surprised. <laughs> so was I. I promised Wolflin safe conduct out of your territory, on condition he leave all the loot he took and pay three score groschen in compensation. Well done. It will take Bernard a while to get over his disappointment at not being able to get revenge. But the important thing is, we're rid of that troublemaker. I must say, Henry, after all that's happened recently, I'm glad something finally turned out well. So am I, sir. And I think you deserve to be rewarded for your efforts. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Yeah. I am honored that a knight such as you takes an interest in me. Have a word about the price. Well, we can try it.
Agree? Close. Drop the price a bit more and we'll shake on it. Finally, a reasonable sum. They stuff themselves with sweetmeats and indulge in carnal pleasures. But I will tell you. God save you, Henry. What the Lord Greetings. What do you need? Mixed goods, handy implements, and machines of every kind. God be with you. Come on up and buy. God Almighty, has something happened to you? Did someone steal your fancy clothes? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Can you tell me something about yourself, Jan? Why not? I haven't been to confession for a while. <laughs> what do you think about this business with Hagen Zul? That's a very tricky matter, I can tell you. Them Zuls are well known among us mercenaries. Hagen and his two brothers fought in the Margraviate Wars. That's quite a feather to have in your cap. But on the other hand, they've got their weaknesses. Like what? They still like to think of themselves as high and mighty lords. Kuno got over that, thank Christ. And he treats us all like equals. You think Hagen's men have no great love for him? Well, I'd say they're running before his whip more than following his flag, if you understand me. Aye. I see what you're getting at. Stefan, can you tell me something about yourself? Uh, what is it you want to know, youngster? What do you think about this business with Hagen Zul? I'd say you and Sir Radzik are very fortunate to have Kuno on the job. He's a master at handling such matters. Is he? Why is that? Dealing with bastards like Hagen Zul demands both courage and sharp wits. It's not a commonplace combination, but Kuno has both in abundance. trying to spice up your life a bit. Did you give her a kiss at least? Can you tell me something about yourself? What do you want to know? What do you think about this business with Hagen Zul? Hagen Zul? Who's that? That robber baron who's been pillaging Sir Radzig's estates. Didn't Kuno tell you? He did. But then he says a lot of things. Zul, Radzig, Sokol and Hine Kravan, Wenceslas, Sigismund. It all goes in one ear and out the other. What do I care? Ride somewhere, kill some fellas, have a drink and go to sleep. If you're lucky, it won't rain while you're at it. That's all. Hey, Jakey, can you tell me something about yourself? Want to get matey, eh? Sure, Henry. What do you want to know? What do you think about this business with Hagen Zul? Zul? Huh. I'd rather keep that to myself. But since you're the only one who's interested in my opinion, I'll tell you. I reckon Radzig's making a big mistake. I might not be grown up yet, but I've walked in these shoes long enough to know that asking a mercenary to do something for nothing is stupid. Wait, what are you trying to say? Uh, never mind. It's just a feeling I have. If Kuno heard me talking about it, he'd tan my hide. All right, we'll drop it then. Can you tell me something about... Why not? Tell me something about yourself. What do you want to know? What do you think about this business with Hagen Zul? Well, I'm worried Kuno is underestimating Hagen. I was at the siege of Lansenbach with the both of them, so I know a thing or two about it. Hagen's got all these noble airs and graces. These knights are talk of honor and glory. Kuno reckons they're like lost lambs on the battlefield, and he's usually right. But that Hagen ain't no lamb. He's a cold-blooded killer. <laughs> <laughs> 
by all accounts. I pinched the ring from the stone. Here it is. Well now, Henry. I hope you'll take it as a compliment when I say you're one sneaky fucker. Here's a little something for your trouble. to see Sir Radzik. So how did he take the news? Well, he wasn't exactly happy about it. I can well imagine. I wouldn't want the Zools plundering my estates either. If I had any. He wants us to carry on patrolling the area. There's nothing else for it. That makes sense. I don't think he'll come to us. So we'll just have to hope we run into him. I'd like to check out the big forest to the north. And then carry on via Ujits. Sure. Mount up then, and let's go. Please, can we stop for a bit? My arse is aching, and I've such a thirst I could drink a moat dry. Same here. Now, what do you say, Chief? Not to worry. We choose it soon. We'll spend the night there. I heard they've got a peculiar priest there. <laughs> they say he drinks like the devil himself. <laughs> There's nothing strange about that. Every other man of the cloth is a swill pot. Or a lecher. Or both. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet. Listen.
so help me. Don't worry, lass. Nothing to fear. We're with Sir Radzik, in a manner of speaking. What's the matter? These brigands came. The menfolk fled and left us there. They started pillaging the place, drinking whatever they could find and smashing things. I ran off, but the other girls... They... You've got to save them. Please, I beg you. Easy, lass. Drinking, you say? Aye, sir. They rolled the casks into the courtyard and started swilling like pigs from a trough. Well, as our old cook used to say, if you want to make a proper goulash, you should soak the meat in ale for a while to soften it first. Ah, let them get well soaked and then go and chop them up. Good thinking, Chief. But what about the girls? Those men, they, they were... Ah... Uh... I'm sure your friends won't be getting nothing they ain't had before. Well, unless they be nuns. <laughs> Kuno, the girl's right. If we delay, her friends will pay the price for it. I appreciate your advice, Henry. But it's caution that will keep you alive, not chivalrous deeds. You promised Sir Radzig you protect his fiefdom, and that means his subjects too. Come on, it's not like their lives are in any real danger. Hagen's men just want a bit of fun. A bit of fun? Are you fucking serious? You know very well, Kuno, how innocent girls can end up after a bit of fun with animals like that. Well, I for one am not going to sit back and let it happen, even if I have to creep in there myself and try to rescue them. Oh, all right. It's not the smartest thing to do. But let's go and tackle those fuckers, if that's how you want it. Good. Thanks. Who wants their back covered? My right arm is stiff since last night. Cover that side for me. It's all in the wrist, Dangler. <laughs> And best to take off your gauntlet first, so as not to do yourself an injury. Still, it's always good to have your helmet well polished before battle. <laughs> Thanks for the invaluable advice, brothers. I'll watch your right side then, yeah? Thanks, Jakey. Hey, fellas. Well, since it's so dark, why don't we just sneak in and take them down stealthily? <laughs> <laughs> What's so fucking funny? That's not really our style, sonny. Anyway, Jan stinks to high heaven. They'd smell him a mile off. And they'd hear your loudmouth blabbering a mile off, too. Fuck. What's up, brother? Heart in your mouth. Jesus, what the... Fuck. It's a sign from God, Peter. A foretaste of what we'll do with the liquid loot we take from the boat. Thank <laughs> you. 
shall never let you down. <laughs> You want to have a scrap with me? Scrap? That's putting it in vulgar terms. I want to challenge you to an honourable bout of combat. <laughs> You've nothing better to do right now anyway. All right. A little practice always helps. My very words. Come on, then. You get what for? time in Colleen. Or white she was. Let's throw a few dice, flour. eh? I wanted to ask her what kind of bread she baked. I figured maybe she liked sweet bread, seeing as how she didn't eat meat. But who knows? I always A little friendly game, what'd you say? But when I went to execution, I always took a roll with me, with cheese. Let's throw a few dice, eh? executed that timber rafter who was murdering people all around there. Or maybe... It was that Jew with a limp they hanged. No, the Jews in Colleen. A little friendly well game, would you say? Too well off. They have no need to go around killing people. Uh, except Jesus. Maybe they poisoned a well. But that one over by St. Bartholomew's used to sit there every day. I've noticed that. The water stank anyway. How about game? I'll lend you my Especially dice cup. The mill. But the mill maid's dead. Jesus. How come mill maids are always so pretty? That's a funny thing, because the mill has. Let's throw a few dice, eh? Huh? Bucket, and we all belong to the Miller's Guild. They say the ugly girl jumps hey, Henry, into the mill. Fancy throwing some so dice? The wheel will mill them into pretty maids. I don't know about you, but I'd go with one. How about a game? Hey, I will I'll lend you my dice card. But experienced, you know. No fucking saints. Which reminds me. Did I ever tell you about the time St. Clear appeared to me? Ah, fuck it. You're not listening anyway. Up for a game? Always. I've got some nice little items to wager. What do you say? Well, that depends what you have. I've got a shield, a jupon, and a very fine embroidered hat. The shield's got the Rickfald crest, a nice piece, handles well, and tough enough to take quite a battery. Then I've got this combat jupon. Not only does it look good, but it'll help keep your skin in one piece. 
And then there's this noble hat. It's not a lot of use on the battlefield, but if you want to look elegant around town, it'll certainly make a big impression on folk. And the girls will be fitting at your feet. I like the sound of that shield. I'll play you for that. All right, but what will you wager? You'll have to make it worth my while. After all, fine things like these here don't just grow on trees. This should be enough, right? That'll do me. Let's play. So, bring it on. We'll see. Hmm. This'll be the one. Hmm. Oh, no. Any chance of finishing before curfew? We'll see. That's it. Hmm.
use your head, man. You'll lose everything. This'll be the one. Good game. You deserve it. want wine you can always have some milk there used to be this charlatan in colleen lived in a house on the road to brandy he claimed he could read people's minds then this other charlatan came to town and settled on the other side of the river and he said he could read minds too and i was thinking if them two met up and started reading each other's thoughts then actually they'd be reading their own thoughts Right? See, because the other fella would be thinking, he'd be. Ugh. Ugh. Forget it. They left us some damn good booze here. And as my old man used to say, the fire of battle must be quenched. Of course, the only battle he was ever in was with Ma. But still, it fits. Anyway, I hope you'll drink with us. Sure. Why look a gift horse in the mouth? My words exactly. Me and the lads were just saying how we know nothing about you. Most of the folk around here have hardly been further than the village market. But you must have seen a thing or two. That I have. I suppose you heard about the raising of scallops. Aye, I heard. And Radzik told me you're from there. But that's probably not the kind of story to go with wine and good cheer. Have you heard of Sir Hans Capon? I heard his name mentioned in Colleen. In connection with some wench, as I recall. A young dandy, eh? Yeah, that's him. He's going to inherit Ratai once he comes of age. I run some errands for him now and again. Well, once we were at the baths together, and his lordship wanted to seduce one of the bathmaids. Naturally, that's what the baths are for, among other things. Yeah, but with Sir Hans, nothing is ever straightforward. First, I had to play strip dice. <laughs> that's good. Did you win? <laughs> I did, but I had to strip myself anyway to get into the tub. Only, no sooner had I done so, than his lordship demanded wine from the castle cellars, which is a long fucking way from there. I reckon you're a man who can't resist a challenge. <laughs> if I'd been sober. I went all the way there and back in my undergarments, and no sooner was I back than he sent me to pick flowers for the girl from the castle gardens. <laughs> it's starting to sound like a fairy tale with three wishes. Well, actually, he probably did have a third wish, but he didn't get a chance to say it. How's that? Well, I got back only to find the girl's sweetheart, some guard called Arson Balls, well, that's what Sir Hans called him, trying to drown him in the bath. <laughs> drown a nobleman over a winch. That's Balls, all right. 
Well, Sir Hans was naked and drunk, so he didn't look very noble. <laughs> anyway, I tackled this fella and saved Sir Hans from him. It could have all got out of hand, but it ended with only a few bruises. Sir Hans never got his way with the girl, though. All that trouble for nothing. <laughs> Tell us another. I was trying to track down these bandits who raided the Neuhof stud farm, and the trail led to Uzitz. I made the acquaintance of the parish priest there. Oh, I've heard some stories about him. Apparently he's quite a character. <laughs> That's putting it mildly. But he does keep his word, and he sure knows how to drink. A typical man of the cloth, eh? I don't know about other priests, but Godwin can booze like a master. So we ended up in the local tavern. What can I tell you? Wine, women and song, you know how it goes. Well, we lost track of time a little, and then the bailiff came barging in and tells us it's past curfew and we're to clear out. Was he on his own? No, he had some men with him. I'm not sure how many. It's all a little blurry. Anyway, we explained to him politely that we had no intention of ending our enjoyment. So, after a bit of discussion with the bailiff, we carried on. Next morning, Godwin was as green as a frog and hardly able to walk. And then he realised he had to say mass. <laughs> That's a show I'd like to see. <laughs> well, he couldn't do it. So he got me to preach the sermon. You? Preaching? You're joking. <laughs> well, I did my best. Of course, I wasn't in great shape myself, so I'm not sure what the flock made of it. <laughs> my word, you're a dark horse. Tell us another. Do you know Talmberg? I do. It's that castle on the hill, not far from here. That's right. Sir Divish is the lord there. You might have heard he was locked up in his own castle for seven years by another lord he had some dispute with. I remember hearing something about that. How did he get out? His wife, Lady Stephanie, managed to get justice for him in the end with the help of the provincial council. Right. But I thought you were going to tell us something about yourself, Henry. I'm getting there. It's to do with the young Lady Stephanie. She took a liking to me and asked me to help her get some things for her cousin's wedding, which I did. And she was very, very grateful. So the lady was nice to you. That's a charming story. Not exactly bard material. No, you don't get it, Kuno. She was very grateful. What are you? No. Never. You and the lady of the castle. <laughs> yeah, it was a bit of a surprise for me too. Are you mad? Did it cross your mind what her husband could do? No, I suppose. But I was caught up in the moment. Jesus, Henry. Let me give you a word of advice. We're not from here, so it doesn't matter much. But I wouldn't go telling that story around these parts. Of course not. Don't worry. A nice story, but let's just drink. <laughs> 